So for our diagram, we're told that OA is equal to vector A, OB is equal to vector B, and then we're told that AB is divided in the ratio of 5 to 1 by C. So this would be 5, this would be 1. And we're trying to write down what AB, AC, and OC are. So let's start with AB. This one's straightforward. We just go from A to O and then O to B. And that will be minus A plus B. For AC, well, AC, if you look at where point C is, it's 5 sixths of the way along from A to B. So therefore, we can say that AC is equal to 5 sixths of AB. And that will be equal to minus 5 over 6A plus 5 over 6B. And then finally, for OC, so to go from O to C, we can go from O to A and then A to C. So that will be A plus AC, which is minus 5 over 6A plus 5 over 6B. So OC is then a sixth of A plus 5 sixth of B. Okay, so we worked out in that AB, AC, and OC. Now for part B, we're told that O to E is equal to lambda B, where lambda is a scalar, and then we're trying to work out what is CE. Okay, so I think to work out CE, the best thing to do would be to go from C to O and then O to E. This will then be the negative of OC, so minus a sixth A minus five sixth B plus OE, which is lambda B. And then we can simplify this. So I can write this as minus a sixth A. And then with the next two terms, the terms with B, I'm going to factorize out the B. So plus lambda minus five over six times B. And that is CE. I'm just underlining the unique vectors in orange, so it's a bit easier to refer to them later. So for part C, we're told that O to D is equal to mu B minus mu A. And then we're trying to work out an expression for E to D in terms of A, B, lambda, and mu. So then we want to try and think about what kind of path can we take from E to D that involves all of these things. Well, we have, we're given what O to D is. O to D is this vector here. So we could go from E down to O, and then from O to D. E to O is just the negative of what we have here. It's just minus lambda B. And then we add on O to D. And then we will end up with something that involves mu, lambda, A, and B. So e to o is minus lambda b, o to d is mu b minus mu a, and this will then be minus mu a plus, so I'll factorize these two, I'll take out the b, and we're left with mu minus lambda times b. And finally for part d, we are told e is the midpoint of cd, so e is halfway along this line, if that's the case, then that would mean that CE is equal to ED. And we're trying to find out the values of lambda and mu. Okay, so we have CE from earlier. We have ED over here. So we can equate those two things. We know they must be equal. And then we can rearrange for, or we can solve simultaneously for mu and lambda. So we have minus a sixth A plus lambda minus five sixth of B, and that's equal to ED, which is minus mu A plus mu minus lambda times B. So we can equate the coefficients. So the coefficients of A would equal, and the coefficients of B would also equal. 
So then we end up with minus a sixth is equal to mu, that's the coefficients of a. Oh, well, that should be minus mu. And then for the coefficients of b, we get lambda minus 5 over 6 is equal to mu minus lambda. So from this, we get mu is a sixth. Rearrange this and put in the mu is equal to 1 over 6. We end up with 2 lambda is equal to mu plus 5 over 6. So 2 lambda is 1, and therefore lambda is a half. We're trying to work out what lambda and mu are, so we have done that now. So mu is a sixth, and lambda is 1 over 2.